Do you hear that? What's that? You hear that? That is the countdown to the next round of tariffs. Come oh. midnight Sunday, tariffs increased to 15% on some of the remaining $300 billion worth of goods uh, from China. Many big businesses are already warning this new round of tariffs will be a direct hit to the consumer. But today, the market rallied on renewed hopes of a trade deal. So is the market putting too much stock on a trade deal actually happening? Is this just the calm before the storm? Guy, well, we addressed it last night, Mel, and Savita's with it. We, we did uh, the squawk box, the three of us. Yeah, we, we, did. Did. we had so yeah, much fun. We did ago. it for like nine hours one morning. <laughs> that but was great. Yes. Last night we talked about, you know, I threw out this term, and then Tim got mad at me. Recall, I said, mm -hmm. you know, don't short a dull market. And it's proven to be correct, at least for today. And I think it'll be correct for the next couple of days, in through Tuesday into Wednesday. I don't think anything's been resolved. I think the problems that got us down 800 a couple weeks ago are the same problems that exist today. Bonds continue to get negative yields. Now you have 30 percent of sovereign bonds now with negative yields. All these are huge problems. The market, I think, can continue to rally, though, on the back of the fact that people will be optimistic in the weekend. Who wants to be short in the weekend, given what could happen? And I think, you know, it's just one of those things where the market levitates into these long weekends. Well, and how about the pension the weekend, fund though. rebalance? How about $20 billion coming into equities? Mm -hmm. How about what the performance was this month? So if you look at what did perform and what didn't perform, you're going to see that flip-flop go into month end as far as pension fund. That's $20 billion. Yeah. What did you make of the rally for the past couple of days, Savita? Last couple of days. I mean, you know, the market's been bouncing around in this pretty tight trading range. I think we're just trying to absorb what's happening next. I mean, I think what's interesting is when you listen to companies that are going to be hit by the tariffs, they're talking about not actually being able to pass that price increase. Yep down to the consumer. So I guess there's good and bad, right? Because the consumer is not necessarily going to be whacked by this because companies are going to eat that extra extra price hike. But company corporate profits are potentially going to take a hit from this. So yeah. I think that's the scary part of the, the tariff scenario. This is going to be a long, long story. I don't think it even gets resolved um, you know, by the end of this year. I think it moves into election year, mm -hmm. and I think it's a continued overhang on the market. So, I mean, if that's the scenario, then we are going to look at the full $550 billion worth of goods from China being tariffed and at an even potentially higher rate than originally announced because of the most recent increases. And what is the impact? Yeah, to you most think? likely. And I think that, like, I think a lot of market participants or a lot of people who are trying to affect or figure out what the effect on the economy would be, they'd love to see it in, in just different tactics. They'd love to see it behind the scenes. They'd love to see it kind of petered out in a way that um, just is not moving world markets around the way it is. And I think that as far as the markets are concerned, I think you're going to go back to July 31st. You're going to go back to that, that rate uh, mm -hmm. cut that we had the first in 10 years. The stock market, the S&P 500, was trading above 3,000 then, right? And so the next day, it was August 1st, where we got that tweet. And that's what I'm saying. If this was done behind the scenes, we wouldn't have had such a massive reaction, a violent reaction downward. And to, to Savita's point, so we spent most of August trading in this range. Guy says, don't short a dull market, fine, we can get back to 3,000. We might even make a new little high if the lies on Twitter are just a little bit better than they were a month ago, that sort of thing. But I think it's really important to remember that the stock market since January of 2018 here in the U.S., it's been one step up and it's been two or three back. The incremental highs, the three highs that we've had since January 2018 have not been particularly impressive and they have not been a place to buy a breakout in by any means. The opportunities have been after the sellouts. But it is uh, lining after up the for one or the other. So we're building sort of a, a more narrow base, if you will. So we've been bouncing around back here, and the market hasn't broken down either. So that's been what impressive. Do you mean? I mean, three times, Steve, since January. We've had 10% sell-off, 7% sell-off, a 20% 20 sell-off. I mean, we've had some serious sell-offs. I'm talking about you, you started from August. So I'm looking at the August right. number. So the, the lows have been slightly higher lows, which is constructive. And they've thrown everything at this market that you would think mm -hmm. would send it in a death spiral. What are you talking about? Sending yeah. it? Dude, the, what, look at Fed funds. They're pricing it at least a 25 basis point cut next month. Some people are thinking 50. The, like, so, I mean, we, throwing out that, isn't have, that we bullish have held, for though. equities? Uh, everything has been so completely negative for the marketplace as far as trade is concerned. That's true. But then we also have always had the backstop of the Fed. The That's, Fed always seems to come in. I don't know and, if we've had a backstop. I don't really? know if we've had a backstop. Sounds like Powell. And, and Trump have been fighting uh, like like cats and dogs. Hold on, on, Steve. On, at, on July 31st, J Chairman Powell said that one of the reasons they did this uh, mid-quarter adjustment was to kind of combat some of the issues that are the, the trade yeah. stuff. I mean, so to me, it does trade seem like it's very Trade balanced. stuff and lack of inflation. But then every time we think, okay, it's going to be 25, 
we sort of have to back away from that. So now we had to push it to okay. the 50 basis points to get the 25. But I don't think there's anything so, carved in stone. That's so what the market was telling you. Let's extrapolate, though. I mean, Savita, you said it, it, if this, if the next round of tariffs, two rounds, whatever it may be, um, hits corporate profits and we have to ratchet down expectations, that is sure to hit the markets, I would think. You know, I there think has to be an, an adjustment. In the stocks to a certain extent. I mean, what's interesting to me is if you look at the companies with the highest import exposure to China, they have already massively derated. They've derated almost three times as much as the market multiple has shrunk. So I feel like some of this is actually in the stocks. And then, you know, when you look at the actual companies that will be impacted, I mean, the good news is a lot of U.S. corporates have been in the process for like the last decade of sourcing outside of China. So this isn't all hitting corporate America by surprise. They sure. always knew they had risk of China exposure. So now, you know, I think that what happens next is it's a little bit of a song and dance. I think, you know, what's interesting is that we're moving into a presidential election year. So that also creates a little bit more drama around how much of an economic hit is Trump willing to take in order to play nice with China. So you think there's a backstop of Trump? So there's Trump, the election year, right. and there's the Fed. Because right. I do think the Fed has, mm -hmm. um, has been relatively uh, accommodative and supportive of risk assets. The problem with, the, with trying to figure out the impact to corporate profits is that just taking a look at how many companies ex, you know, bring in however many goods from China, that has never given you the full impact, right? It's so, never, I mean, take a look at what Autodesk said or what Box said just this week. Uh, Cisco, I think, as well. Cisco as well. Them. And Cisco, we thought, had moved its supply chain enough to get around and some of the And within three impacts. months, it seems like right. things changed dramatically for Cisco. And it's, it comes down to, you know, where's the confidence for CapEx? And you had mentioned September for a while. Is the confidence there? I don't, I don't think it is. And I agree with Savita. I don't think, and I've said this for a while now, I don't think there's going to be any resolution to this U.S.-China situation. I think you're going to have a series of, we're going back to the table, we're not at the table. But with that said, you know, you said something, these tariffs were gonna, are going to take place on either what, Sunday night or Monday night. Mm -hmm. I'm not necessarily sure that's the case. You could see a scenario where President Trump on Friday night or into Saturday, sure. something like President Xi and I had a beautiful conversation. Right. We've decided that, you know, we're going to have conversations we'll in a month from now. We're going to pull the tariffs. He's so focused on the market, I absolutely could see something like happening. With that said, you're at a point of now diminishing margin and returns where the market now seems to more and more discount his comments. I'm, I think next week is a positive week. I think we set up for a really dicey mid-September.